Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host and senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church. We welcome you to this study as we continue now with part eight of our series on the 12 disciples. And this week, we're talking about that disciple named Thomas. Our subject for the week is Thomas, Embracing Faith Beyond Doubt. Don't forget that there is a link in the description to the free PDF handout that accompanies this teaching. It will provide you with full detailed notes along with personal discovery questions that will put you in a position to be able to take a deeper dive into this week's study. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and be kind enough to leave a comment or maybe even a question should you have one. So let's take a dive into this week's study, Thomas Embracing Faith Beyond Doubt. Now, as we delve into the life of Thomas, let's open our hearts to the lessons his experiences offer us. Thomas teaches us that even in moments of doubt, Christ's transformative touch can lead to unwavering faith. So join us this week on this exploration of faith, leadership, and hope as we look at Thomas and embrace faith beyond doubt. So to begin with, Thomas was also known as Didymus. And he was that disciple whose journey from doubt to devotion is both relatable and inspiring to all of us. Because Thomas teaches us that even in moments of doubt, Christ has a transformative touch that if we'll allow him, it can lead us to unwavering faith. So the background and profession of Thomas is an interesting discussion. Thomas's name actually means twin in Aramaic, and it remains somewhat of a mystery as far as the gospel accounts because no information is really provided pertaining to the meaning of his name or who he was a twin to. And so while his profession is also not explicitly mentioned, Tradition suggests that Thomas was also a fisherman. This would certainly have aligned with the occupations of most of the other disciples. As you note, Jesus often called fishermen directly from their occupation, and his word to them would be, follow me and I will make you fishermen of men. So, Let's talk about the calling and the family of Thomas. When Jesus called his disciples, Thomas responded, leaving behind his past to follow Christ. Though details about his family are very scarce, his decision to join Jesus on this transformative journey suggests that Thomas had a true willingness to prioritize a higher calling above his own personal desires. Some of the key moments in the life of Thomas are, number one, the declaration of faith amidst danger. You see, Thomas exhibits courage by declaring his willingness to stand with Jesus even in the face of potential danger. Remember that the first century Christians, the disciples in particular, who were the first 12 men that he would really impart the kingdom into, lived in very dangerous times. Following the resurrection of Christ, Christians, or as they were known at the time, the people of the way, were persecuted vehemently. Often, they would be boiled in a hot kettle of oil for not denouncing Jesus. Or they would be tied to the back end of a horse with their head banging against the streets of Alexandria simply because they would not denounce 
Jesus and say, Caesar is Lord. And for Thomas, there was a moment when he declared his faith and his undying fellowship of Jesus Christ, even in the midst of danger. Let's look at it in John chapter 11. John 11, of course, is the story of Lazarus. If you recall, Lazarus died, and his sisters Mary and Martha, prior to his death, had sent word to Jesus that his best friend, Lazarus, was sick unto death. Finally, Lazarus dies, and it's now four days later that Jesus mentions to his disciples going to see Lazarus. Well, Jesus speaks to them in terms of Lazarus being asleep when, biologically speaking, Lazarus had now died. And the disciples did not get the connection or make the correlation. And they go back and forth with Jesus, as we sometimes do, saying, if he's asleep, that's a good thing. Finally, Jesus has to break it down into the common denominator and language and say, Lazarus is dead. Now I'm going to wake him up. To this, Thomas responds through the chatter and the unwritten mutter of the other 11 disciples. And he says in John eleven sixteen, 16, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, many people look at this as the reason why Thomas received the nickname Doubting Thomas. However, in this moment, Thomas was not expressing doubt and disbelief. Thomas was expressing the utmost faith of, the, of a disciple, and that is, I'm willing to give my life for Jesus. Also, we find another key moment in the life of Thomas, and that is honest doubt and encounter. Honest doubt and encounter. Let's look at John chapter number 20 to see how Thomas expresses honest doubt and encounter. In John chapter number 20, verse number 25, this is after the resurrection of Christ. And Jesus has arisen from the grave. He spends 40 days with his disciples. But when he encounters Thomas, Thomas is still in disbelief. Why is Thomas in disbelief? It was because he had been a witness to watching his Savior being drugged from hall to hall, being defamed, disrespected, clothing stripped off of him, the follicles of his beard being plucked out, being beaten with the cat of nine tails, whipped all night long, beaten literally beyond recognition, crucified, dead, and buried. And although they had the promise that in three days Jesus would rise again, they were now fearing for their own lives. It was every man for himself. And that's the reason why you only see John at the cross amongst the male disciples of Jesus. Of course, there were the women who were there to support Christ and who showed up at the grave. Well, when Jesus encounters Thomas and the other disciples after the resurrection of Christ, Thomas says these words. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, I essentially will not believe it. And is this verse and this context from which Thomas derives the connotation as doubting Thomas? But let's put ourselves in Thomas's position for a moment and the, the shoes of the other disciples. Had we witnessed this directly? How loyal would we have been in our belief system based upon what our eyes had seen 
and what we had experienced walking with Christ. And to see this and to hear of it and the horror of it all, it was a traumatic experience. Yet, he embraced faith beyond doubt and allowed himself to have honest doubt and encounter. And let me stop here and say, you will never shock Jesus with your words, with your thoughts, because he already knows what you think and how you think before you ever say a word. So it's okay to be honest about how you feel with the Lord. And that's what he does. Unless I see it, unless I touch it, I'm struggling here with my belief of it. There's another key moment in Thomas's life, and that was the proclamation of profound faith. The proclamation of profound faith. John chapter number 20 and verse number 28. Now we hear the faith. Remember, in John 20, 25, he says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger in the nail marks. Now he says in John 20 and 28, my Lord and my God. You see, friends, he has a proclamation of profound faith when he recognizes Jesus is indeed the risen Savior, my Lord and my God. So John 20, 28 is a verse from the New Testament that is specific to John. You'll only find it here in John. And this verse is literally a part of a larger narrative that describes the events following the resurrection of Christ. The context centers around one of John's or Jesus' disciples, Thomas, who is also known as Doubting Thomas, based on the previous verse. And earlier in that chapter, Jesus appears to have to have made his way to his disciples and after the resurrection, but Thomas is not present at the time. And when those other disciples tell Thomas that they've seen the risen Lord, that's when he expressed his skepticism and says, unless I see and unless I touch, I will not believe until I actually see the wounds in Jesus. And later on, Jesus appears again to his disciples when Thomas is present. And here's what I love about that. The Lord is not going to be upset with you when you express doubt, but he will show up in your life to help you become a believer and a greater person of faith. And Jesus, knowing what Thomas has said, actually invited Thomas to touch his wounds. And upon seeing Jesus and touching his wounds, Thomas believes and exclaims this wonderful verse in John 20, 28, my Lord and my God. And this statement is so significant because it is a declaration of faith and recognition of Jesus' divine nature. This verse actually is cited quite a bit in Christian teachings to discuss issues of faith and belief. It highlights the transformation from skepticism to faith, and it's seen as an important testament to the divinity of Jesus and the reality of his resurrection. This moment is pivotal. pivotal. It's pivotal because Thomas understood the nature of faith and belief in Christian tradition. Really, a lot of what we believe rests on this one statement that was a key moment and a pivotal point in the life of Thomas. From doubts spring forth a powerful proclamation of faith as Thomas recognizes the divinity of Christ. And notice his words again. My Lord and my God. Let's look at some of the lessons from Thomas's life. Lesson number one is a lesson of courageous faith. He was willing to go with Jesus 
even if it meant dying with Jesus or dying for Jesus. How courageous is your faith? Do you love him enough to give your all for him? Well, let me give you an action step to help you live out courageous faith. In moments of fear or moments of uncertainty, declare your commitment to stand with Christ, trusting his guidance. Maybe you're facing moments on your job or in your life or with your kids or your marriage that are moments of fear and moments of uncertainty. This is the time, my friend, to declare your commitment and stand with Christ and trust that he will guide you through every single situation. So, he had, number one, courageous faith. And you must have courageous faith. Secondly, we learn from the life of Thomas a lesson of honesty in doubt. So even when we are in doubt, we must be honest about where we are. Let's look at an action step to help you apply this teaching. You see, the statement embrace honesty in your doubts, seeking solutions through prayer, reflection, and deeper connection with God's word in relation to Thomas's experience in John 20 and 28 offers valuable lessons on how to approach moments of doubt in your spiritual journey. Thomas did not pretend to believe when he had doubts. He was honest about his skepticism concerning Jesus' resurrection. And this honesty is crucial because it is the first step to overcoming doubt. By acknowledging our doubts, we open ourselves up to finding answers and strengthening our faith. So it is important to seek solutions through prayer. And in a roundabout way, that's exactly what Thomas did. When he said, unless I see, I won't believe, he was really hoping and trusting that Christ would come close to him to show him. That's what prayer is, and that's what prayer does. So in your moments of doubt, embrace honesty. Seek solutions through prayer, reflection, and deeper connection with God's Word. And here's number three. The lesson of profound pro- proclamation. Profound proclamation. Boldly proclaim your faith in Jesus, recognizing him as Lord and God, even in the face of skepticism. Notice this. Thomas recognized Jesus as both his Lord and his God because he was recognizing the authority of Christ, not over just walking on seas, not just over feeding multitudes, not just over raising Lazarus and others from the dead. But he was God over life and death, and he himself had conquered the grave. That's why Thomas has no problem saying, my Lord and my God. And you must rest assured that even in your darkest moments, Jesus will be your Lord and your God and show his authority as you boldly proclaim your faith in Jesus, recognizing him as your Lord and your God, even in those moments of skepticism. So let's end with some points to ponder from the life of Thomas. I want you to think about this this week. How can you demonstrate courage in your faith, especially when you're faced with challenges or potential risks? How can you show your faith, 
demonstrated when you are challenged, particularly with potential risk? And in what areas of your life do you struggle with doubt? And how can you honestly bring those doubts before God? Are you ready to make bold declarations of faith, recognizing Jesus as your Lord and your God, irrespective of external circumstances? Hey, I hope that you got a lot out of this week's session and that you will embrace faith beyond doubt. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check the links in the description for a free PDF handout that will provide you with full notes on this session and personal discovery questions. This is Bishop Littman, and thank you for watching the Midweek Refill. Until next week, you go with God.